Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on the use of the surface repair tools in version 2.3.1 of the InStep application. I'm going to go ahead and start the application, I'm just going to use the demo version. Like that, everyone has the same kind of tools available to you. In the demo version, you have all tools that you would have in the full FE version. So all these tools here are related to the FE version, and these over here are late, related to the design version. The difference in demo version is you can't import files. You, you're just stuck with whatever you can download from, uh, from the ones that we've made available, which is, are available here. So I just go in, I'm going to use um, the standard monkey head that's available in Blender. And I'm just going to go ahead and launch the repair tool. If you want to see where these issues are, you can turn on the arrow indicators and you can also size them, make them a bit smaller. Um, but the basic idea is here, it tells you where the locations are and roughly what, what the issue with them is. When you launch the repair tool, it'll actually check the bodies and if it finds that one of the bodies has some kind of issue associated with it, it'll come out in red and it'll pre-select it for you. If that body happens to be okay still, then this will be deselected and the, the name will just be in the standard font. But we're going to open up all of them here. So I'm going to maximize this. And the first thing you see is the view is, is kind of transparent. It's got this sort of glimpse of these edges here. We can go ahead and make this fully opaque and we can also change the size of these edges which is not always uh, an ideal shape from the beginning. So we can make these a bit bigger. We can also make the vertices which you initially can't see bigger. Whatever you know whatever's your preference for at this point. Now I'm going to show you a few different ways of, of fixing these issues here. The first way is you just click on one of the facets and you expand the selection to include all of those bodies and then we're just going to show only the selected items like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this first edge here and then I'm going to select all the other edges that are around this perimeter. Now once I've selected all of these I can use the whole closing tool over here which will just create a, uh, a set of facets that enclose the back of this body here. Once that's done is I'm going to show all the data again just so I can then work on the second eye. Now on the left we, we're going to use a slightly different way of selecting all these triangles. We can use the flat select tool and that brings up a dialog box where we just type in 360 degrees which basically means it will select all the triangles that are attached to the first one that was selected and the normals have to be within this angle limit in order to be selected. So 360 degrees just means all of them. I'm going to go ahead and isolate this again and start with the selection of the edges. Now once I've selected the first one I can use an edge flood selecting tool. What this does is it will take the first edge and try and find all the other edges that are attached to it that are only used by one, one of these triangles. So if I was to do it here, it, it wouldn't work. This, this edge is used by two triangles, so it's not really um, part of an edge. So we're going to deselect this again. Select this edge. Oops. Select this edge and then use the flat select, which you can now see selected all of the perimeter edges here. I'm going to go ahead and close this hole up. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Now, at the same time, if if you want to look at just a wireframe, for example, you can toggle this mode here to only selectable items, and you can turn vertices and these off, so you end up with a essentially a wireframe view. I'm going to go ahead and show everything again, and also toggle on the the faces. We're not really worried about vertices right now, but we we're going to go ahead and show those as well. Now, for the main body, I'm going to essentially follow the same path again, but I don't want to. I want to show you kind of a few shortcuts here. So I'm going to select the first body, and 
I'm going to use, unlike previously when I just clicked the tool and then brought up the angle, I can actually just use the Alt button and click it again, which reruns this with the same settings as previously used. So we go ahead and we'll do the same thing to close up this here. Now again, this is an internal loop, so we can use these, close this, and we're essentially done. Now over here I'm going to show you a manual approach whereby we select, let's turn this off for a second, oops, So I'm going to deselect this, I'm just going to select this vertex, then this vertex, then this vertex, and I'm going to create a face by that, and I can do the same over here, miss that one. And we can keep going like that to create our own specific uh, orientation, unlike over here where it starts at one point and kind of fans out, we can actually create those manually. Or again we can go in and we can select the edge loops. Um, sometimes that will actually not be possible, sometimes the edges are uh, not available for that kind of mode. Uh, maybe we'll undo that one. Um, Go back, select this, and select the edge, do the loops, and now I want to manually deselect this and add this here. And then we're left with this, which we can just go ahead and delete. Now, one more little thing I wanted to show is these are actually all sort of a little bit crooked. We can go ahead and clean this up by selecting um, one of these triangles that we like, followed by all the other ones that are part of that, and then we can actually force them to be flat. Now, this case didn't do much, but now they're actually all perfectly flat and on the same plane. Well, we'll actually skip this one over here. I just want to show you what you can do as far as selection. Once you've selected a few, um, just by clicking one after the other, you can deselect with the shift key and then selecting one that's already been selected. If that kind of feels unnatural, you can switch to different selection modes. Uh, that allows you to just click. So when you click, it just selects whatever you've selected or shift to add to that group. Some people prefer that just because different CAD applications that they use to use one or the other approach. Now, with all this done, I'm going to go ahead and show all the bodies again. Uh, once we like what we've changed, we go ahead and commit these changes. That will bring us back to the main application where we'll go through, we'll double check that no issues are detected, as we can see here. And once that's the case, we can go ahead and export or, or do whatever we want with the data. Just a quick thing, um, we credit the the socket behind this eye to be flat. If I want to show this, I can I can click on this body, which makes the name here gray. So select and then right click in the suppressor. Now if we look at this we actually see it's it's nice, smooth, flat. So if we went ahead and used the planar combination features would turn into just one feature. Whereas the one over here um, is as it was generated by the application, it's kind of jagged and, and not perfectly flat. So in a future tutorial, we'll go over some of the other tools. Uh, we'll look into some of the other options that we have. But I just want to remind everyone that, uh, you know, if you see something in the application that you like or don't like, do send us an email. We'll, we'll try and address, address those issues the best we can. Um, and as usual, if you go to our... Uh, discussion forum, feel free to post a note there asking about new features to be included or issues you have with existing ones. That's always the case. You know, this, this application is being developed by a small group, so there's always a chance that there's bugs in there. But we usually do our best to address those. And as you've seen in our policy, when we come out with a new release, um, if you've already paid for the license, we'll, we'll upgrade you for free. So, Again, if you have anything you need to know or any questions or comments you have,
please drop us an email at support at solvering.com, uh, which is also posted on our website. Or if you go to the online help or discussion forums, you'll see that email posted everywhere. Thanks and good luck.